Good morning, everybody. It is July 24th, 2018. Uh, today, I'm going to do something a little different. I usually upload, do my Hawaii and Mauna Loa updates and, you know, kill away and just do my NSARs, my tilt monitors, and stuff like that. However, today, I'm still going to do that. However, I'm going to be looking at, we had, we just had a 5.0 earthquake out here on the Juan de Fuca. Um, or at least that's what it initially was reported as. And since then, it has been downgraded to a 4.3 so here it was when it was first reported it was a 5 um, now if you go to the USGS it is reading at, as it says a 4 point yeah 4.3 and it was right here on the Juan de Fuca uh, the Cascadia subduction zone this whole area right here this is the whole area they've been warning uh, warning about saying there could be a big one that it could that could occur uh, could be an 8 plus 9 plus they don't know it's just because it's a subduction zone which are the larger it, which which actually can generate the highest and the largest earthquakes just so you know if you didn't know um, So and I was kind of curious if maybe it's a foreshock Which is a mild tremor preceding the violent shaking movement of an earthquake But I, I'm not I, I kind of doubt it is only because I think a bigger earthquake would have already came by now um, But if anything this does show that there is movement out here on the plate line that there's been well there's been constant movement on the plate line that uh, energy has been transferring so hopefully the pressure that was there has been released in the small earthquake and there's nothing big coming or this as I said this could just be a foreshock and could be leading up to something major um, I had a viewer comment and they they were asking about the basically about the California volcanoes they had suggested that they saw um, steam coming out of mammoth volcano so I figured I would just do some research and bring to you guys as if you know, bring some attention and some information if you're not aware of what's going on in California um, if you live there if you live nearby there if you're just like me who's just curious about it so uh, first and foremost we'll start on this one I should have had this the other way uh, California is volcano country so um, Three California volcanoes are considered very high threat by the U.S. Geological Survey. They are Mount Shasta, Mount La I want to say Lassen, Lassen, and the Long Valley Volcanic Region near Mammoth. Three others are considered high threat: the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which includes Mount Kenochi, Kenok, yes, something like that, the Medicine Lake Volcano, and the Salton Buttes in Southern California. Just like all the active faults in California, we know they're going to break, said Tim McCrink, uh, supervising engineering geologist at the California Geological Survey. As he compared volcanoes to earthquakes, we know they're going to happen, we just don't know when. A California eruption would be different than the creeping lava at Kilauea. What we, what we would expect here would be more like the Saint Hel uh, Mount St. Helens eruption. McCreen said more of an explosive eruption so that puts out a lot of rock and dust and gas in the air but there will clear there will there will be likely clear signs of a, a California volcano if it's getting ready to go earthquake gas emissions deformation of land surfaces people will likely have an ample warning to evacuate so that's good the last uh, Mount Laysan last erupted in 1915 and scientists scientists believe Mount Shasta last erupted 1786 um, and Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. Um, a little more information. Shasta is the most volu uh, voluminous volcano in the Cascade region, or range, meaning it has more mass and, it, and an eruption could emit millions of tons of debris. This and the proximity of many towns and homes near the mountain make it California's most dangerous volcano, even though Laysan and the Long Valley are more likely to erupt. Threat potential is considered very high, and that's because we know there's magma beneath the surface, said Stovall. There's no sign it's moving to a point of eruption. The reason why the threat is, potential is very high is there are towns and highways and railways that go through. There's a lot of air traffic all that could be impacted. If a volcano is more, uh, more remote, we know it's more likely to erupt, but there's likely nothing really nearby. We won't give it as a high of a ranking. Which, I mean, that makes sense. So I pulled it up over here. You kind of get an idea of what's going on on uh, Google Earth. First place I wanted to show was the Salton Buttes. Out by the Salton Sea. It 
is we're gonna be looking at all the ones they had talked about that that are in high um, high status or as they labeled as a very high threat so Mount Shasta Mount Laysan and the volcanic region near Mammoth so actually I don't need to be looking I'll, I'll come look at the buttes in a second so we'll go ahead and go to Mount Shasta real quick and this is just to give you uh, just so you can see what the area around it looks like that that's all I'm doing on Google Earth Weed. <laughs> um, so over here we have had almost no, almost no earthquakes. Looks like okay, we had one, and it was reported on the twenty fourth. Kind of weird. We have one, a one point one. Is that, and that's all they recorded ever, this whole month. Okay, so I guess there's only been one earthquake at Mount Shasta. So that that's good news. Uh, Lason, Lassen, and I, I apologize. I literally have no idea how to pronounce this. So correct me in the comments, because I'm saying it wrong. So I, I, at least I think I am. Uh, we've had a couple. Nothing, nothing too major. I'll leave all this linked to you so you can keep track. This dates back all the way to the 25th. Uh, up here. Oh, so at Mammoth, we've had quite a bit of activity. This is the one that the viewers said they saw steam and that they were kind of worried about. I, I would say. And I mean, I feel like you have a right to be. There's a lot of activity going on over around this area. And considering that this is a very high threat area, um, that's, I mean, I feel like the earthquake would be concerning. Although apparently earthquakes and volcanoes are still, a, it's still a theory. I guess they don't know if earthquakes contribute to volcano eruptions, which blows my mind. I don't understand how that's a theory. I, I thought, I thought they went hand in hand. But, I mean, I guess not. So now we'll look at Mammoth Mountain, which is the one that we're currently looking at on the USGS um, with all the activity around it. Back, I backed up the little bit so you can see the whole area. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty intense. So there we are. Mammoth Mountain. And it doesn't look like it's around that many air, like um, that many cities or anything. It looks like it's kind of uh, remote, which is good. Gold, man. I mean, there's a couple of towns, but nothing compared to um, the other ones, like Mount Shasta, for example. It's not good though. A lot of earthquakes. Uh, Salt and Buttes. Um. Again, so over here at the east and west butte, for I, in my opinion, we're getting a lot of activity. Pull that up real quick. Back this up a little bit. Um, I think. Yeah, I do. Okay, nice. So I can show you the fault lines. There's a lot of fault lines that lie under all this stuff, so you can kind of see what fault lines actually occurring on. Maybe. Like I said, my computer's gonna be kind of running sluggish because I have a lot of stuff going on. Salt seas over here. Right. Pretty sure it's salt and sea. No, I want to say it's over here. Uh, see, now I'm messing up my whole video. I act like I don't. I I know it's soup. Yeah, there it is. Where is it on this little map? Am I too far north? Am I looking right at it? I feel like this is it. I don't think that's it. See, if I was a geologist, <laughs> I'd know exactly where this place is at on uh, on this map. But regardless, it doesn't matter. We have it open over here. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's open right here. We know where the earthquakes are happening. Right there. I apologize. I'm not too familiar with California. I live in Oklahoma. But, regardless, I can find it on Google Earth. It's right here. And you kind of see what's around there. There's a lot of, I mean, a lot of, there's, that's a pretty big town right there. Goes down in towards uh, Mexico, up towards Indio. Uh, the east, so we're actually having the activity occurring over here on these buttes. Uh, right here. These two which are known as the East Butte and the West Butte. Pulled up, see? A 
Well, actually, kind of looks like I, I don't know now. Now that I pulled up, I think it might be too far back. Maybe that's not the East Butte. Because the activity looks like it's going right here, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I take that back. It's not happening at the East Butte. A little too far back. But Salt and Buttes, regardless. In and around the Salt and Buttes, and then up towards uh, Border Springs. And there's a lot of activity. What's right here? But you gotta understand, a lot of these are fuel injection sites as well. There's fracking, so not too sure how much of this is actual movement on the on the uh, fault lines, and then how much is actually being injected and uh, man-made. So I'm done looking at California and embarrassing myself. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, switch over now to Hawaii, something I think we're all a little more familiar with. Um, I'll read the most recent report, which was released on July 23rd, Monday. Uh, Fisher 8, which is where, which is located in the lower east rift zone. Fisher 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward uh, from the vent. UAV crews found overflows from just northwest of Kapoho Cone following a collapse event at the summit uh, 854 last night. The overflows were mostly confined to the existing flow field installed before threatening any nearby homes. The most vigorous o ocean entry is located a few hundred meters northeast of the southern, southern flow margin with a few tiny Poho toes entering the ocean from the Kapoho Bay lobe to the north. The southern margin of the flow remains about 500 meters 0.3 miles, from the boat ramp at Isaac Hale Park. However, a new lobe has started from the southern lobe and is active, active along its southwestern margin slowly heading toward the ocean. Another fisher activities are active this morning. So that's good. Fisher 8, as I said, I, I feel like that's going to be the new Kilauea. That thing is, it's really taking shape. Um, I do, I'm, I'm not, I am not going to do the tilt monitors and um, the gas emissions and stuff I usually look at to me. I'm just, it's just the same old, same old. It's still going on. I just, uh, I'm just going to switch it over for right now. I'm just going to be taking a look at the insars um, and also touching on the Helena slump because if you take a look at the, this is a really interesting insar in my opinion. We just have um, I haven't been able to find something that's comparable to something like this. It's just a rather interesting what we're seeing in my opinion. Um, so before I show you and start talking about this, this is from from the 13th to the 19th. So take in the blue suggests how far it's falling or it's moving uh, to the east. The red indicates that it's rising or that it's moving to the west. These indicate ground motion, so purple is almost stationary, while red is moving all the way up to 2.8 centimeters. Down here, we had we had falling or drop uh, movement to the east to almost uh, 75 millimeters. So, looking at the new one now, and I believe I have it actually pulled up. Yeah, I do. Okay, so the ground movement or ground motion I wanted to talk about. The bands right here we're seeing. And up here towards Mauna Loa, so here's Kilauea right here. The Helena slump, and it, this is a nice little, so it starts about right here, so, so right here, and it goes all the way to about right here. So it's all this, and all this is where the ground motion is actually taking place. A lot of this, so green up is movement, and that's quite a bit of movement. It's red, a lot of this right here. Is what I'm saying, and I can't find this. If you look back at other previous ones, you won't find anything that's that's, that's like that. Um, it's rather interesting. Now I don't know what how much movement's going on. The only reason why there'd be movement like that, in my opinion, because there's continuous seismic activity at Kilauea, so it's causing the 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 land down here to shift and to continuously move. And then we also have the um, the lava flow over here that's slowly, slowly creeping in on the Helena slump, which is only going to add more weight onto the potential landslide area. Which, in my opinion, is going to if if the seismic activity doesn't make it collapse, um, the the lava flow coming in could very well do the exact same thing, only because it's just so heavy. The material being placed on it is heavy. Um, let me scroll up a little more. I wanted to show you when we had that big event May 4th when it shifted the Helena slump two feet. I wanted to show you what it looked like on the NSARS because it doesn't look like what's going on at the most recent. Here it is right here. See these bands? 
that's what it looks like when a fall or a, when it's been shifted. I mean, you could tell there's a lot of movement going on right there. And also by that image right there. But the ground motion. So when we come down here, you don't see anything like that. It's just... There's a movement, though. If you can find another image just like this, feel free. Um, and then same around Mauna Loa. We're just getting a lot of active, a lot of movement. Now, that's all I have today to really update on. I just wanted to touch on the NSARs to give you more of a more of an understanding where the Hel uh, the Helena slumps actually located. And on the NSARs, where you can kind of look for stuff, and I, I've, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, I'll have all this links below so you can continue doing some research on your own. And, you know, maybe you'll find something. If you find anything that you feel like that's worth commenting or anything that I missed, or if you have any suggestions or, you know, feedback or anything for me, please leave it below. I, I try to read every comment. So, yeah, uh, other than that, you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching.